We are live right now, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another live stream, the first live stream of 2019. And we have Michael and Bart Bellin. Hi, you guys. Hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. Hi, everybody. <laughs> where are you guys at in the world? What do you mean? Where are we living? Yeah, where are you living? Where are we talking to you? We are living in uh, Belgium. Yeah, I'm in Seattle, so it's uh, quite a quite a bit of difference. It was 8 a.m. in the morning. Oh, no, it's 9 a.m. now in the morning here. And you guys are about ready to have dinner over there. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I am sharing this. And I know um, people are just joining us now. And if you wouldn't mind, I know a lot of people wanted to watch this live. Uh, so if you're watching this, go ahead and hit that share button. Uh, let's get this uh, information far and wide. And don't... Uh, don't forget to ask any questions uh, down in the comments section below. And uh, tell us where you're from in the world, where you're watching this from. I'm in Seattle. Uh, the Bellins are in Belgium. And uh, we have people from all over the world that tune into these live, live streams. It's super cool. So it means not only English speaking people, but also people not speaking English. <laughs> so I suppose we must go slow in our <laughs> conversation <laughs> that's right that's right do you, how many do you do you uh, speak any other languages other than english bart i do i speak english i speak united kingdom english i speak english. <laughs> and he speaks french, french german netherlands and a little bit of swahili swahili yeah it's crazy to me that you come to America and uh, one language. You know, well, I wish my. Well, and we have you guys have a lot of a lot of different countries around you too. Well, let's say like this: the younger you start with speaking foreign languages, the better you become. You know, and yes, when you are young, you don't have to study it; you just play it. It's like the, the, four, the same thing. That's right. Formative years. So the formative years, and that's the format that you're going to be wanting to use for the rest of your life. And during that that uh, that time, if we can make that format big, so it can accept a lot of information, and that includes many different languages. Yep. And you're absolutely right. It's same same in dog training. Or it trains you to very fast learn another language because you were trained in a language skill and you fastly will adapt that system to other languages. I'm not kidding. Which is similar also to dog training. Oh, yeah. And in what way? Well, you generalize. I mean, you learn a new language. The first language is like in shaping, the first shaping exercise is the most complicated for the dog, and the second will go faster, and the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, whatever, will go faster and faster. And the first is the mother language. Oh. Is, the mo is the mother language, huh? Oh, yeah. That's why the longer you stay on your first exercise, the harder it is to go to the second exercise. Mm. The longer you stay on your mother language, English, 20 years, the harder it is to learn another language. That's it's a, it's a common thing in IPO where people <laughs> don't want to teach the dab, the stand in motion until they're ready for the two or the three. They don't teach it right away. But then yes. they know the sit and the down and the, the stand comes more difficult because they didn't, they had so much practice and so much repetition on the, the first two that the third is a little stumbling oh yeah well, so that's it. if you teach it all, if you teach all three at the same time it's more fluid they're both they're all layered together it looks yes. more difficult, but at the end it's easier yes so say that again bart it, it looks it looks more difficult mm. but at the end it's much easier it looks more difficult because they must learn three things instead of two that's right and i've heard that the shaping exercises are, are kind of like giving the dog the right answer 
you know, and showing them, hey, look, this is what we want. This is this is it. And and then uh, the, the dog is exploring. And then once they've done it, do you guys use a clicker or anything to indicate? How do you how do you indicate that the dog is doing exactly what you want? Well, let's say like this. For the public and for public appearances, we use a normal clicker. Or we use the whistle because the whistle in our sport is allowed in competition where the clicker is not allowed in competition. Why should we not use the whistle as a clicker? And a lot of people get confused by that when they see that because it's a little bit not normal. And when we click or when we whistle, it means stop doing, you did the right job, come and pick up your surprise. Your surprise, which might be money or might be no money. <laughs> it's a package. So, but you say like money, you're not handing them like a quarter, you're handing them dog money, right? Is that, uh, is what, what do you mean whatever, by money? Whatever the money is to the dog. If it's a, a, a pat, a toy, a, a slap. <laughs> uh, in the beginning, certainly you like the existential food. Exactly. Because well, I think, go ahead. Well, I think that helps people understand because they get motivated for money. And that's what I call dog money all the time. You know, pay that dog, pay them. You know, they've done a good job, pay them. Um, and, and uh, you know, I think that that, and, and, and I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. Um, but you know what, really quick, I know we're, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves. I want, I want people to know, um, anybody who's watching right now, we have, um, we have a ton of listeners from all over the world, New York State, Switzerland, Greenville, South Carolina, here in Seattle. Um, would you mind giving a quick, a quick bio and just tell people uh, what you do, where you're located? Uh, we said Belgium. Um, and then uh, just basically what is um, Bart Bellin, Neo Popo, and um, just kind of a quick synopsis to, to help uh, our listeners out that might not know you. Well. To start with, my first name is Bart, and my family name is Bellum. <laughs> I'm married with Michael, and since we married, she's also a Bellum. <laughs> That's family-wise. And me, study-wise, I was a sport teacher. Okay? Michael, you? Uh, a lot of things. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I went to school and have a degree in psychology. I worked okay. in a hospital and I did some other things and then I started a dog business. So, um, but I was never a sport teacher or. No, and then we did met in the room 232. Oh. That's where we did met in the room 232. No. 10 years ago. Yeah. At a, at a dog event? Yeah, the dog. Oh, no. training seminar and then me the day before the seminar oh, I always so let, me walk. let me interrupt let me interrupt <laughs> i drove there to the seminar at, at the encouragement of my friends because they were like oh bart so great and i never heard of him but i went to the host's house and they said oh my gosh mr bellin he just left and I was like, oh, okay. So I went to my hotel. I, I didn't know, I didn't see him or anything. Next day. The next day, so the day before the seminar, I always walk around in the hotel where most of the time they put or they also host the guests. And I always like to see the cars they drive with, the trailers. I'm a little bit interested in the gear. And I remember very well on the park place, there was a Mercedes Sprinter, which is not a typically American brand. And I was looking and said, huh, a Sprinter here. And I still remember the advertising on the door was DC Metro K9. And then there was a lady coming, which later I knew it was Michael, with the German Shepherd pulling on the leash. And then we start speaking. And then she asked me, are you there for the seminar? I said, yeah. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I'm not. And then the next day, she saw me in front of the public. And then she was looking like me, like, 
you joker. <laughs> yeah. And then it's the rest is history. You guys uh, got along and did he fix, did your dog uh, stop pulling or uh, well, did you get some answers in that seminar there, Michael? It's not about pulling, it's about on purpose letting the dog pull on the pull collar. Yeah, so yeah. it means that, especially if you want to do bike work, we like, and there's different opinions about that, that the dog must know that the big, large collar, there it's allowed. And yeah. later, it's a must to pull. It's a must. Right. In the direction of the target. And in the bite work, we like dogs, and there again, everybody, his personal opinion, we like the dog to have a little bit struggle with airflow. <laughs> because in the old dog training schools, oh yeah, when the dog is a little bit without air, the, the bite is much more serious and much more drier. And that's why you see a lot of helpers grabbing for what we call the choke collar and during the bite, give a little bit pressure in the bite. Take away air, play with the air. And there you see that dogs that are very nervous, starts to be very, very concentrated and biting very hard. And of course, this must be done very well. And we have an anecdote about that. When I was a little kid, I think 15 years old. I was already in Belgium in one of the leading NVBK clubs. And word was spread that in a club not far from our club, there were always dogs biting like crocodiles. And I was very interested in that. And I did drive with my bicycle or my little moped, I don't remember anymore. I did drive to that village where the club was. And there I was a little bit disappointed because the helper was about 60 years old and he did nothing. Huh. He didn't move. The dogs were biting very hard and very viciously. And at the <laughs> out he was trying to choke them, but he could not choke them. So the result was a hard bite, but no out. And I was a little bit like, huh? I don't understand. And I went home disappointed. And I think two or three weeks later, it was triggering me again. And I went back. And that day I was even more disappointed. Now the helper was 75 years old, <laughs> sitting in a chair. And yes, the dogs were biting hard. And at the end, no out, choking, choking, but still no out. And there, bingo, I did grab it. The helper did nothing to make the dog bite. The dog had to bite from himself. And the choking was the magic, involuntary biting cue that today top trainers use to make dogs biting much harder and much drier. Oh, yeah. Well, it's it just, but you know, as a little kid, I grabbed that like thing. Never like, forget a, it. A lot of things like that happen in uh, dog training, where you have an intention of one thing, but the dog interprets it differently, and your result is not what you expected, but you can use it somewhere else. Yeah, it yeah isn't that kind of wild? <laughs> well, that's why one of the most important things is read the dog and read the picture. Because for one dog it will do this, and for another dog it will do that. There is no 100% rules. And that's what dog training, you know? Yeah, every dog's an individual. Yes, sir. And you're working with the dog at the end of that leash. You're not working with the shepherd you just worked with. You're right. working with that dog right then and right now, you know, and that's important. And then the other thing to, to know is that uh, this is the sport world. You know, where people would look at, uh, you know, some of the stuff that, that uh, they do in the sport world and they have no clue uh, a lot of times what these dogs are even capable of. And, um, you know, what, what were you, were you born? I mean, did your father work dogs or anything, Bart? <laughs> no. I come out of a family where we had the guard dog in Africa. So they were on a long cable. And on the cable there was a chain and they had to guard the property. That was it. But as a little sorry. Rhodesian Ridgebacks or no, 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 no. A little mutt. Just, Just a little, a little mutt. mutt. 
was mean enough to bite everybody. Lucky. <laughs> yeah. Lucky is a dog's name, huh? Name was Lucky, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, um, I don't know what it was, but it was little and vicious. There's a picture, actually, if you look at the Bart Villain biography on the website, I think there's a picture of Lucky there. That's possible. Yeah. Right. And Bart is a little kid holding the chain. <laughs> so, so what, what, what was your interest in getting into sport then, Bart? And what was I mean? I said you were fifteen when you went and saw these guys, the sixty-year-old and the seventy-five uh, <laughs> helper. Let's say, let's say like this: the same question is for everybody. What is your entrance? What is your interest in dog training? And why do you invest so much time in it? The same for other sports or other passions. Somewhere, someone, there must have been a trigger. For Michael, I'm sure she has a trigger, and I think I have the trigger. It's, 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 it's more than one trigger. I think that the day I was born, I think two or three months later, my parents did receive that little dog, Lucky. So I did grow up with that dog, and it created the picture of what life should be, I think. <laughs> That's one thing. Yeah. And then I think I was around seven years old, and then I received a nice little book. And the name of the book was Uncle Boomlala and His Seven Dogs. Uncle what? Boomlala. Boomlala. It's a name like Tralala. Boomlala. Okay. <laughs> Boomlala was a circus artist that did do circus acts with his little dogs. It was fascinating me. Uh, and I think that that there's something. And actually, you know, people used to call Bart Circus Man. Oh yeah, <laughs> in the because, beginning of my career, because I do a lot of exercises in those days that are not requested and is more based on with tricks. That, that whole weave and the turn around and the healing on the left, healing on the right, healing in the middle. Now everybody does it, mm. but ten or fifteen years ago, no, no. And I always did it from in the beginning as a young kid. And all the old men always said, don't do it. You, you yeah. blow up your dog. The dog doesn't need that. It's yeah. already difficult enough like this. Yes. But I was stubborn. I continued. Everybody always says that. Your dog doesn't need that. And then what I did see very fast was that all the tricks the dog did with pleasure and fun. And even if the dog did not know the trick, well, nobody did see it. And the exercises the dog did not do with pleasure. It means that you have the right technique to learn the tricks, but you don't have the right technique, training strategy to learn the exercises. Mm. And that's why Michael and I came up with the idea, well, let's teach every exercise like a trick and then slowly name it when we are happy. And then later when he must do it, he is still flashy and he does it on cue. That's Nepopo. Okay? So it's a very long story how it slowly came together. It's a very, very slow process, you know? Yeah. And then we look back and we see it, you know, that we're here today. But I think, you know, that you let your dog be your expert. You didn't listen to these guys, these mentors, you know, you still kind of listen to that intrinsic drive that, uh, that, that the relationship with that animal brought about. Um, what about you, Michael? What, what got you into working dogs? And, um, you said that you were working in the hospital before as a, in a oh, psychology field. Um, and I'm sure a lot correlates there too, huh? Yeah, well, I, I always had, when we were a kid, we always had a dog. We had three dogs when I was growing up. And my before we had dogs, my neighbor had a dog. And the dog was lost, and I was the only one who could find it. So I had a, and I rode horses. So I, I've, I've been involved with the animals all my life. Um, and then when I went to uh, university and I uh, have a degree in psychology, that uh, a lot of the things I learned there has been instrumental in developing the criteria for the school. Mm. Yeah, it's, you know, if you bring two people together that have the matchy and you find the, 
the oil to bring them together. That but you needed, a, you needed a lot of oil. Yeah, well, that was happening between <laughs> Michael and me. So it means that two very stubborn persons together with very strong ideas. Well, we, we cooked the whole thing, you know. So the, there is a lot of monkey see, monkey do in dog training. In certain yes. sports. For example, I see today a lot of defensive in the bite work. Me personally, I cannot see that because 99% of the times it's not done well. So if you don't understand defense, don't touch it. And if you look at the dogs, they are not in defense, they are still in prey. So <laughs> I mean, at the end, they're still playing the games. So, and, and that's what happening with people do things without understanding them. And that was the fun thing by Michael and me. We did speak about all the things and the whys. Why the this? Why. And that's yeah, the why. why. Oh, yeah. and, the and why is your power. That's what I tell people. If you don't know the why you're doing this, you're spinning your wheels here. You don't, you don't, you're not rooted down in anything. You're just doing something because somebody told you. And that's why I say, why? Why are you doing that? And then they just look why? at me because I saw somebody else do it. I was like, that's that's not a good why. <laughs> I, I normally tell people do nothing unless there's a reason to do something. Mm. Do something only for a, as a reaction to the dog's action, you do something. An example, by going around the world, a lot of times, we did see people having a toy under their arm as a healing target. Yes. But then if you look to the dog, the dog is not looking to the healing target, the toy. The dog is looking to the eyes of the handler. And then we tell the folks, what are you doing? Well, my dog is in direct reward. He looks to the toy. And then we say, no, he's not looking to the toy. He's looking to your eyes. So, or... You do it on purpose to have a conflict there, which is the ball, or just throw the ball away. You don't need that ball. You have your eyes. That's it. So people do things, but they don't grab what they do. So well, it'd be like saying to a kid, you know, say thank you, but I'm going to put a twenty dollar bill right here to ensure that you say thank you or or do the etiquette that is needed. It's it kind of it kind of messes it up, you know. It's not real. It's not. It's not a real connection, real commitment, and it's and and when you when you do pay these dogs, they've really earned it, and it's a and it's a true uh, relationship there. Instead of trying to throw the money, uh, put the cart before the horse, you know, and try to pay, 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 pay for nothing that the dog has done is is uh, to me like paying a kid twenty bucks for saying every time they say thank you or something. This is basic etiquette. And if we pay the kid at the wrong time, it's going to have a negative effect on that behavior um, for the rest of their life. And, and it's just not understanding that. Real Hi. quick, uh, we have uh, Larry Crone. He says, good morning, folks. So he says he's watching with us. Good old Larry. Um, and then what you were saying earlier about the the, the choke and making the dog bite. Uh, John Sparks uh, here, um, he says this that same collar pressure causes a lot of pet dogs to launch or bite uh, uh, other dogs unintentional by handler. Yes. Of course. Yes. Uh -huh. Of course. You can generalize yes. it on a lot of things. Yes. And it creates also pleasure in the minds of the dogs. Mm. Taking away the air and at a certain moment getting it back make, makes them very vicious. Mm. Well, that's why kids play that game today. It makes yeah. them very happy. But yeah. if they go too far with it, they kill themselves. I'm not kidding. That's what yeah. happens. Oh, yeah. Well, that's that's a really good point that I think that John made about, uh, you know, j just to, to how that correlates into even though you're a sport uh, dog person, that a lot of this information can be gleaned and there's pearls everywhere. Even with these positive clicker trainers, man, I go watch them and there's a pearl, you know, even even if it's. Uh, you know, a lot of it is might be hogwash. There's something in there that you can learn. And, and, and it's important to have a collective knowledge base um, in dog training because, like, uh, as we were saying earlier, every single dog is an individual. And there's something that's going to happen that's going to throw a stick in your program that, uh, you know, these gremlins that pop up with behavior, um, that well, it is important to have that eclectic knowledge base. 
Well, go, going back to what we were speaking about before, treating every dog the same or doing things that you really don't need to do, a lot of people are in the uh, mindset of we need to build drive, for example. But not all dogs you need to build drive. Some you want to calm them down. Mm -hmm. so you must read your dog and say, hey, I, I don't, I'm not trying to get him – more gung ho. I'm trying to get him more stable and whoa. Uh, so I'm again, trying to find the off button. I'm trying to hit the off button on this dog. You, know? you just see a lot of that, even that, and it's just because people aren't reading their dogs. Mm. We call it. You must train your dog in exercise and immediately opposite of the exercise. If you stay too long in one direction, it's so hard to go the other direction. Can you give me an example? Well, for example, 20 years ago in the bike sports, nobody, nobody was able to make the dog look to the handler. Nobody. All our dogs were looking around like crocodiles. Who am I going to grab? And then... If you look at the old videos, you see that. Oh, yeah. So there was never focus on handler. Never. And then slowly came focus on handler. And the style. And the style, so far that a lot of dogs even never look to the helper anymore. Yeah. And that specific phenomena you did see in the back transport in the IPO, the dog was looking to the handler, but not to the helper. Yeah. Okay. So we did see the long, the same thing in the long tackles in the in the dog sports. The dog were looking to the handler. The helper was making a noise, 30 yards further, walked away slowly 30 yards further, but because the dog did look up, he did not see the helper moving. And then you say bite, and the dog was running to the place he, he, he did hear yeah. the helper mm -hmm. doing chiki chaka, <laughs> but he did not visualize it. And that's why the top trainers today, they have what we call control on the focus. Look to me, look to it, whatever it is. And Michael and I, we call it helper. No matter it can what be it is. the ball, the football, a person, whatever. That's helper. And well, we just... put that on our hand with a piece of food and slow it again. You know, look to me, look to helper. Look to me, look to helper. And then you put pressure. Look to me, look to helper. Look to me, look to helper. The same pressure. For exercise, the same pressure for opposite exercise, and that's which what, most people cannot do. Yeah, and that's that's what makes it uh, uh, very nice, especially with the the biting, biting and outing, holding and giving, yeah. teaching them at the same time makes them very even. They're they're equivalent, so they're just as happy to because they must they must out and they must bite. It's the same. Mm. For example, if you look to the little videos that Michael did post from a dog named N4 or from her last dog she has now. What's his name again? Ragnar. Ah, Ragnar. We have so many <laughs> dogs, I guess. Ragnar. I'm joking. <laughs> but I mean, for us, they go in the bike words. So the first exercise we always learn is hold out, hold out, hold, give, hold, give. Because in our bike sports, in the obedience, there is two exercises where they have to fetch something and give it. It's 20 points. From 120, 20 points are on that. So by training it from when they're young, it's a piece of cake. And it also makes it easier when you, when you already have that reflex response of a good give out when you're whistling or when you're outing your dog in, in the bite work. It's a reflex response. That's why Michael uses the whistle when she does those games with her little pups. Okay. Good job, come and get the money. But in the top sports, ring sports, for example, you can use the whistle and you use your training tool in competition. Why should you not do that? And to go yeah. back to the exercise build, the hold, give, hold, give. Later in the bite work, for example, in the ring sports, 280 points are on biting and outing. But if your dog is not biting, you have zero points. 
But if your dog is not outing, zero points finished. So it means that the two are equal. And it doesn't mean because your dog will out that he doesn't like to bite. Oh yeah. People have that idea they, they want to stay very long. He must really bite like a killer before I t teach the out. Yeah, that's too obsessive. It, it, it teaches obsessiveness and, and not only like that, but you know, and this is all awareness. That's all we're teaching this dog is awareness, to be aware of everything that's going on in this environment. We belong to a world that's rich with external stimuli, almost infinite amount of external stimuli. And we belong to a world where chaos is inevitable at any minute. And it's fair. It's actually our moral obligation to teach these dogs how to uh, exist in this world because we're bringing them into the human world. And you're giving them the right answer both on this and then let me show you contrast this now let me show you this now let me show you that let me show you this let me show you that now show me beautiful you know and then it's it's opening up those lines of communication in a, in a simple way that that dog is knows that right answer and that's that's basically it that's shaping what I was saying earlier about showing that dog that right answer before we move on um, it's and also tuck it in. Yeah, it's the same as come to me and go. Yes. Go there. Come to me and go there. You don't have to have the come be lightning fast before you teach the go there. If they both come up together. Yeah. Well, and if your dog is only coming to you, guess what? They're going to get separation anxiety because that's all they know. <laughs> and so when you go away, that dog is like, oh, crap. This the the thing that's kicking in his head that we have uh, uh, conditioned is going off. Those neuro those neurons are starting to fire and be like, "Hey, this is not what I've been shown." I'm starting to have doubts, fears, anxieties flooding my body, and that's not fair to that animal. We have to show them, uh, you know, the the other side, the contrast of of what that is. And uh, we have a couple comments here. The bite release video with Ragnar was very helpful, Valerie says. Um, Valerie. Uh, this training style works great for me with uh, task training, retrieve exercises with pet and service dogs. The take give combo has been very helpful. Doesn't just have to be sport uh, bite work. One of my goals and one of the reasons why I have so many inter uh, people um, on on these uh, interviews in the, the sport world and in the pet world is that I think that we can learn so much and we can uh, have unity and um, together, uh, we don't need to have such a big division in the dog world, um, and that's that's absolutely right. All this information that you're learning, these pearls of wisdom, can be applied to pet, can be applied to service dogs, can be applied to just bring your relationship with your beloved animal to the fullest potential that it can be. I agree. Yeah, and you know. That's why Michael and I were very disappointed if we go around the world or specifically in the known dog sport countries that you see still the old fashioned training from 50 years ago. And then you are thinking, how the hell is this possible? We are now 50 years later with so many possibilities for people via the internet, via seminars or whatever. To learn something, no. The big chief said this, and we say on that old pattern. Makes me crazy. Well, we all have these little boxes in our pocket. And in fact, we're talking live on the technology that we use every single day, you know, to access and to uh, disseminate and to produce information. And, and not only that, but we also have equipment. And in my opinion, you guys are producing the best equipment in the world um, with Martin systems and the e-collars, the electric collars that, that you guys have um, there. Um, it's, it's, can I speak on that, sir? Of course, you can. <laughs> <laughs> the first dog that I was quite successful with was a certain FLUP, F-L-U-P. And I did buy FLUP <laughs> from a guy that was seven times Belgian champ, so he was not a domas. <laughs> he could not control that crazy animal. And I still remember today what I did pay for that dog. 
80,000 Belgian francs in 1996. No, sorry, 1986. It's long ago. And I had to give, Jeff Nulles was his name, 10 stud fees. So he could come to me with bitches, 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 yeah. bitches. Yeah. bitches. And then I had to let my dog do the job, 10 stud fees. And I was a very big opposant. I was against the e-cars because in the old days, when you push the button, there was only one level, the maximum level. Yes. And a helicopter did fly over. The dog was receiving a stimulation. And when the CBs of police patrols was going on, the dogs were zapped. So I had very bad experience with that. So for me, it was a no-go. Yeah. Until the day that I had that crazy dog that was not outing. And why was he not outing? Because as a young dog, he did not bite. And then one day, he started biting, and the old owner did let him bite, and no out, and no out, and no out. Thank God. And then slowly, with the choker, and he became more and more vicious also. That's and what we were talking about earlier. That dog with normal physical systems. Everything they did was a part of the game to bite harder. For the dog, the out stimulations were part of the game to bite harder. It, it was conflict training for him. So, but what he did not know was electricity. And I never forget the name. There was a, a guy, Lou Zemi, in my club long ago. And he had one of the first, in those days, DT systems around the neck of the dog. And his dog was flying out as a Lou, give me that thing. <laughs> Bark. When you break it, do you pay me back? I no. said, hey, Maybe. I will pay you whatever you want. <laughs> I want to see if my dog is out there. And immediately around his neck, there was no training for we learned the dog to use two, three weeks to wear the collar. I had no a long patience. time ago. I want to see it immediately. I zapped the button. He did fly out. You cannot believe. I said, aha. Uh -huh. mm. Now I'm pro ecology because <laughs> that was much better than all the other brutality that did not help and did make mm. the dog tougher and tougher. And I did buy, in those days, my first car, and that was a German brand, Checker, I never forget it again. I had to pay again more than 80,000 Belgian francs, which was a lot of money in those days. And I did two long tackles, and the thing was flying out of each other. <laughs> As a young guy with not a lot of money. And then I did buy the Tritronics with one pin, and that worked quite okay with the antenna until the roof. And then, and now you must listen very well, I created a own training remote control with an engineer, that I didn't pay for that. And everything was ready. It was the first remote control that by transmitter you could change the levels, because in those days it was not the transmitter, on the receiver, you have to change resistors, okay? So that I was already, my, my wheels were spinning, and I did pay an engineer, and then the day was there, I went to the banks, and I think it's one of the first and the last times I did ever cry. <laughs> the banks did not want to support it. And I was, no, no sir, because, there is only three crazy guys in the world like you and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Okay. At the end, it was a lucky shot that the banks were not giving the money because three months later, there was a brand, Inotech, that came on the market. Inotech. Mm -hmm. And we could buy those little things for 300 euro. In those days, uh, in money, about 300 euro. No, it was more. It was... 20,000 Belgian francs. So it was a little bit more than 300 euro. And very small and a little transmitter with a booster. And that's how I learned to know the big bosses from Inotech, Greg Van Kuren, Steve Gill, which are still good friends, you know. Yeah, but absolutely. The ropes, I mean, yeah, we, we respect each other very well. But that's how I remember uh, Greg was telling me a story about you jumping a fence or something for a dog. Well, or something. 
<laughs> let me continue first because okay, that's sorry. where you start. Yeah. And then I worked a while for Inotech. Inotech has been sold to radio systems. Mm. And I was at radio systems as a consultant. And one of my jobs was to investigate competitors. And then I did buy all the brands. And you know which came out as number one for me? Martin oh. Systems. The little Belgian brands. Martin oh. Systems. And I said that to the management of radio systems. And I don't know if they did grab it. They did hear me, but they did not like the idea, I suppose. And then I was pissed. And then I went away from radio systems. <laughs> and I became a consultant for Martin Systems. And that's how, by accident, I came to that brand, Martin Systems, and I became a good personal friend from Charles Martin, who was a hunter and specialized in bird hunting and pointing dogs. So don't underestimate Mr. Martin. Mm -hmm. So he, Mr. Martin's pleasure was not to make money because he was not <laughs> interested in making money. He was interested to be the most innovative on market. Mm. Make cool gadgets. Gadgets, yeah, yeah. Well, that eventually will help dogs and help uh, open up the lines of communication with people and dogs. Yes and no. We did not achieve to reach the world with all the specialities that they have. So we were good in our little niche. We could not spread the word enough. And then two years ago, by accident, Michael and I would give the demonstration on a Martin Systems event. And in the evening, the family comes to us and say, Michael Bart, are you guys eventually interested of taking over the company? And we were like, huh? What are you asking us? Totally shocked. We were shocked. They said, what's going on? And then they said, well, Mr. Mr. Martin has Alzheimer. Okay. I did see the little while already that there was something going on, but I didn't know the verdict. And then Michael and I had our little powwow, and we said, okay, we are interested. And then it took eight months, Michael, nine months, with the help of professionals, Four Alliance. Four Alliance. We owe Thank those you. guys so Even much. Even John Charles. <laughs> Four Alliance is a company specialized in taking over companies, purchasing. Okay. And they did find a way where everybody was happy. Anyway. If one day we would stop with Martin Systems, we can write a book that will become a bestseller. This part of our life is one of the most stressful parts because Michael is smart, I'm smart, but we are not educated for this type of deals. You know, there's a lot of legal stuff, patents, financial stuff. You need you a need lot of moving parts. Yeah. And now Michael and I. We are the only dog trainers in the world that are the CEOs from the e collar company. So we go where we want to go. And yes, we sometimes must go where the money is. But on the other side, we also follow our dreams. Yes, we do that. But I have to say that the, with the, all the, the uproar about e collars around the world and how e collars are becoming forbidden in more and more countries every year. Yeah. Uh, we do feel that there are uh, two major reasons. You want to follow up? No, no, no. Two major reasons why, uh, why it's e-callers get a bad rap. One is uh, that the callers are not up to snuff. Yes. The, the consistent the consistent levels involuntary stim from uh, changing of the Im impedance of the dog's skin uh, battery life that's not a uh, that's not a animal welfare question but uh, those those things impact the dogs adversely and when people see it, it creates a bad feeling. Mm. So Martin system has the SSC patent, which is a, a, a patent where the, the transmitter and the receiver speak to each other. 
So every how many seconds? It's like 20 times a second. 20. But and it, 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 it adapts automatically the output so that the dog feels the same like the preset level. And, and also another very important part why uh, the e color is on the seat is education of the trainers. And this, contact measurement. Yes, this is, this is specific yes. technical features. The big problem is that the end consumer, Joe Bob, wants an e color. That's it. He, he doesn't know enough to decide what do I really want. It's and they pick up a color, they pick up a size of antenna. They have a very specific, but... Well, um, it's, it's very similar. I, when I bought my first Persian rug, I went into the store and I saw one and the guy told me the price and I said, uh, can you go lower than that? And he, yes. it, it was a Kashan. And he said, lady, you don't know anything about Persian rugs. That mm. rug looks the same to you as that one. It's That's the right. same with e-callers. People don't know enough to know what they're shopping for. Well, and at the end, it's a money deal, huh? so and the money drives the volume. That's a typically American uh, sentence. Uh, yes. We did hear a lot of quite uh, angry emails. Why are you guys so expensive? Why are you guys so expensive? And well, there is a reason for that. Eh? There is patents. We, we we did the whole explanation, and it's too much to explain here. Yeah. But now, being the bosses of a company, we understand better why the most e-color companies don't come with novelties because mm -hmm. they have so big quantities to produce that if there is a bug, they have ten thousand pieces that come back. So they go for the no risk, and the try to make it so low in price that people buy and buy and buy and they can sell and sell and sell, which is big business and there's nothing wrong to that. But there is not enough innovation. If you see the iPhone world, there the innovation goes much faster. The computer right. world, innovation goes much faster. And everybody has Technology, that. Ooh, technology. Ooh. And e-collar should be considered technology also. Yes. No. We do consider it technology. <laughs> Well, I'm looking on Amazon right now, and I see I just typed in electric collar, and I'm I'm just I'm cringing here because I see one. The best seller is thirty nine ninety nine, forty bucks American, you know, forty dollars American. And the the collar that I use of most here is the e collar, the mini educator, two hundred bucks. Yeah, you know, um, and that's you know that's that's the good quality collar here, but it's also, I mean, we're I mean, it's, it's, you can't, quality, you, you pay for what you get. Now, let's say like this. What we are very amazed to see is the, the price anti barks are sold. We know that anti bark is the most complicated tool to make, to make safe so that the dog is only stinged when he barks during the action of barking. Not we, after. Not after. Most anti-barks react after the barking. And that's why a lot of strong dogs start barking. And it's about interpretation. Is the stim a correction or is the stim an aversive stim? Aversive stim comes together with unwanted action. Correction comes after the fact that the dog is disobedient. Mm -hmm. So... But it's only a correction that works. <laughs> I tell you, the anti-bark is the most difficult color and we are so amazed to see that it's so cheap <laughs> but the, the going back to what bart was saying the second reason why e collars are under siege is because of the training yeah, yeah. It's, boom it's, yeah well, it's it's part it's part of the the popo nay culture of training what is nay popo what is that I, it's, what does it, that mean nay popo is a negative positive positive system okay so it's a little bit like i could take a leash pull a leash when the dog starts coming in my direction i stop pulling on the leash and i give him a treat a, cookie, okay. a, a piece of his food easy so have, easy to i push it's nay i stop pushing his paw stopping the pressure it feels positive and yeah. then you can add 
but a lot, of, a lot of the old system is when we get this this email a lot at our e caller company is it's about time I buy an e caller because my dog is misbehaving. So they go to Popo Pone. And the uh, problem I, of Popo Pone is the net comes after six months or one year of positive, positive training. It's a language that the dog did not learn to speak. And then there is different possibilities. If the dog received the unpleasant feeling, he runs away, flight, or it's normal dog also, he freezes, or you have a strong dog and he will fight. Freeze, mm -hmm. flight, fight. If your dog from day one learns to accept pressure as a language, as a friendly language, well, I can speak with a low voice to you, and I can raise my voice if needed. Well, the same thing with pressure. You can, that's a tactile command they use in horse riding. Everybody understands that. With my hand, I can be very nice to my wife. With the same <laughs> hand, she can be more brutal to me. I mean, yeah. that's the point. So, right, but that's a, that's a very clear explanation. And I never know what to say when people send those emails. I never really know what to say because it's not training. It's a business where we sell collars, but we're trainers also because we're a, a, an e collar company owned by dog trainers. What people don't understand is a short question can be a whole book of answers. Yes. Oh man, I know all about that. You know, and that's where people, you know, they friends and family, they're like, hey man, could I ask you a couple questions about uh, my dog? You know? <laughs> and I'm just like, well, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, no. Well, no, yeah. No. I'm like, how much how much you got left on your credit card? <laughs> I don't know the English word for very complicated mathematic exercises, but imagine yeah. Person that doesn't know how do you call it the Vierkans Uh Calculus. Calculus is that the thing there. Vierkans work, I don't know. The al algorithms, maybe. Algorithms, algorithms. whatever. Yeah. So you, you, a person that doesn't calculus. know calculation calculus. asks you that question. Calculus, yeah. Well, how can you go there without going to the basics? You must go to the basics, and then after mm -hmm. five years, you can answer the question. And in dog training is the same. People always jump over the basic things. Right. And it, it's in the clubs the same. And they all want to see a young dog from two months or three months old biting. They don't impress me. They learn the little dog to smoke cocaine. The little dog has learned to behave. How do you yeah. want to be happy with obedience later? Explain that. So. It's like people already ask Michael, hey, is he biting your dog? Is he biting? We say, well, we hope so, but we train him first. And of course, we let him grow and he's good in prey and everything, but we are not interested in the biting. We are interested in harmony. And when he's ripe, we will let him bite. But that will be so easy. But that's what people don't grab. People are never interested in the basics, they only are interested in. What, what, what we call the chicky chicky chaka training. A helper that jumps around and whacks and, and, and makes a lot of noise. We, we want harmony when we say out, you must come back. Well, it's, it's a part of that, that teaching the hold give, you know, the both yeah. sides of the training, you know, you have to teach them both. Otherwise you're just giving them one side of the, of the coin. And when they see the other side, they yeah. don't know, you know, they're like, we don't want to fight. We don't. We want to minimize the the fighting. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and um, we have a comment here. I think the crap on Amazon. We're talking about those e collars. Uh, the crap on Amazon and pet box stores drives the animal welfare activists. Uh, I think that to be true. Absolutely. I mean, in this emotional arena uh, that we're in, people get very salacious, um, uh, you know, because they love their dogs. I get it. But a lot of times I think that that, that they try to think with their emotions in the training here. And you can't think with your emotions, folks. Right. That's right. That's. No, that, that's that's. And then awesome. to go back to Martin systems. Now, Michael and I, we have two full time jobs. We have the Naples Port Training School which was there before we were the owners of marketing systems. It's a very powerful tool. 
So it's a little bit like you have now your school and they can propagate the Bible. The Bible is the e-color. You see what I mean? So, but we try to be very uh, honest in what we do. But honest, I mean, the school must stay the school. And yes, we like our students to have good tools, but until now, we never did oblige them. You can only do the school if you use more consistent no, tools. We, you see what I mean? No. We could do that, but we even don't do that. So, but we think it's the best, that's why oh, yeah, we yeah. like. <laughs> I think it's the best too, man. And the finger kick and then the 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 sensor, this is the game changer, folks. Is a sensor that shows that we have contact before we even begin. That is we call it the contact measurement. That that right there is the game changer in my opinion because so many times I'm trying to get the level of this dog, he turns his head and oh my gosh, I just hit him at a, hard, a higher level because the contact wasn't made that I was not aware of. And guess what we just did? We, we just uh, introduced distrust. We just introduced, uh, you know, I'm trying to build rapport and build power and build with our relationship with this dog. And boom, we just wiped all that stuff clean. And and to me, when I first saw that, my my brain was just like, oh, my goodness, when can I get this right now? <laughs> like, I want this right now. I want that extra insurance that I know that this is making contact here. And so, uh, you know, that's the, the proper um uh, innovation, I believe. It is fantastic. Bill, what you also must know is that Michael and I, 10 years ago, we started the idea of the chameleon. The chameleon is the slicky color that is very discreet looking and that you can adapt to the changing politic environment where you move in or out. It means that by remote control, you can take out all stimulation so that there is never a proof that you did use stimulation. We call it, we have a delete kick. In the last 10 years, when we worked a lot in Germany, where the use of the e car is not allowed. Well, everybody know that the Bart Bellon seminar was standing for modern training with modern training tools. And yes, the e car is part of it. I never had problems, never, 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 in despite of all the advertising that was done, but I was always ready with the delete finger kick to push out stimulation so that they can not catch me on with the smoking gun. You see what I mean? Yeah. So but the 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 chameleon is more than the electronics and it. it's the the chameleon is a mechanical patent that makes it so that you have perfect contact because if you have a box on the end and you have contacts on the box the box is the heaviest part so it's always you're you have to tighten it very tight in order to get it in order to make it so that your contact points are always touching the neck this creates a variety of problems with contact and also with necrosis because it always falls to the same spot. You see a lot of people, if their dog starts to get necrosis in, on, the, on the neck, they move the box to here. But what happens after a half hour? It's down here again. It's here again. And then they move yeah. it here. And then guess what? It's down here. It's it, doesn't, it doesn't change. So yeah. with the chameleon, because you don't have a box, you don't have a weight, and in fact, even a weight helps because a weight would just pull the sides in yes. and make contact better. But there is no, uh, for the extender, the contact is on the sides. So the box actually helps the contact. And for the chameleon, you have no weight. It's weight is evenly distributed and you have perfect, you can move the contact points where you want. You can use feather contacts on it you have the contact measurement feature. And if you have necrosis, you can move your contact points. And that's the whole beauty of it. That was a design to make contact better and to make necrosis a thing of the past. Yeah, those feather, those feather points are something else too, man. So it, it is beautiful, but it's more than the beauty aspect of it. Can you slide it over just a little bit? My, you're like holding it right behind where my head is. So over to the other side, oh, other side. 
the other way. There you go, perfect. So right there. So we ah. see the point. So if you point out the points on the side there, so oh, right there's a, there's a feather point and then there's a feather point there. So those are the what make the contact on the dog's neck. And then we have the light that shows uh, when the stimulus is, is hit or when the contact is being made, there's a cycle of lights that go through. And uh, um, Carl will bring a uh, transmitter so we can see it. Yeah. But and then uh, I put these things on me too, you know, and, and I was having him hit me with this stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's remarkable. And the thing is, is that this was invented for professionals by professionals. And now you can see the light lighting up there. Now, if she makes contact with her thumbs there, you'll see the lights change a little bit there. See that? So when she doesn't make contact, we have the lights going off to show you that there's no contact. But once the contact is made, and the this, lights go off. But so before we even start, we know that we're making contact. And to me, that is humongous. Yes. Well, when uh, I use this on my puppy, and when I put it on, I raise his head and I just look. Oh, okay, we have contact. If we don't, I know I must brush him. I must move it. I, I'm, I know for sure I've contact. But it means that Michael and I, 10 years ago, we had a vision. The e color is on the stage. That's why we create the chameleon. We did protect the name with a trademark, which is now since a while registered. A lot of patents. And we did shop around for the e color brand to put in, and we did choose the Martin Systems brand to be at the inside of this molded plastic, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, we licensed all the things from Martin Systems. So we did pay the company Martin Systems <laughs> to sell us electronics and to be able to sell the chameleon for our little store, the BCBB. No, yeah. Yeah. The BCBB store. And well, it created something magic. This is what we call the extender, where all the other brands can put their brickstone on it, and then it's yeah. a look-alike of the chameleon in functionality. Okay, but not real because you don't have the contact measurement. The only thing you have is the side contacts. But it's already the beginning. What Michael and I will offer very soon to the other brands is to put their electronics at the inside that will come so we are ready for that step it's we're, we're apple we're on our next phone okay. no, no. you understand what i mean but you yeah. have <laughs> you have diehards in every brand that say well i like to stick with my brand right. why not so the only thing is we will put it in another well it's form. the same as with dog training is we feel if it's working for you if it's making harmony then you do something right if you like your baller and it's working for you and you the last thing okay. so michael and i we did complete the whole chameleon dream the last thing that we're still going to do is we're going to put a finger clicker on market that if you push on this it will click that you hear it it will not be electronics It'll be a regular clicker. It will be a regular clicker that the picture of your ring is not a proof that you did use whatever. It's just a clicker. And yes, it will be quite expensive yeah. because that mold is again, what people don't understand is that moldings cost 30,000 euro. A little mm. thing like that, 30,000. Yeah. How do you want to amortize that? Of 30,000 <laughs> pieces? Well, in which year will we sell 30,000 pieces? Of, in of, the year of, 25, of 25? A clicker that looks like 20, that. 2020. 2020 yeah. next year, you guys are gonna. <laughs> so, and people must understand that things that we do have a price. So, we, we must right. well, we must pay for the R and D. We and we're two people. It. We're two people. We're not a big company like radio systems. You know yeah. what I did? I did. I just came back from the Martin Systems today, so I had to drive three hours, and I did do quality control myself so <laughs> all the ctts and all the chameleons i'm the tester around my neck i test everything he does I, i'm not kidding you should have heard him when he was testing the bark collar at I the office bark collars, he was barking everything. he was barking we had so, 
Well, we have people here that are, Daniel says, amazing, didn't know about this collar. Uh, and he says, outstanding. I use the e collar on my shepherd all day since we are out most of the day in the country. Wonderful. You're pushing the technology of this tool. I need the feathers for sure. Um, and so, yeah, there's people out there, and that's that's the goal here. And not only that, but in you know, martinsystemshop.com, that's that's how, if you guys want to find out more about the chameleon and actually order it, um, go ahead and visit the shop, and you can reach out to them. And, and um, you know, I, I, I don't. I don't endorse anything and I don't, you know, unless I use it, you know, and, and the, the callers that I typically use just because of the price point are ecaller.com, you know, Greg, uh, the mini educators and stuff. But this is the caller that I dream about, <laughs> you know, this is the, for me and my, and my little guy. So this, my little girl right here, I don't know, can you guys see her? Yeah. You know, she, she's, she, you know, I want to I want to get the little guy or the little collars for my little guys. And I was looking at them um, and, and with the chameleon and the way that you have uh, this collar, you can actually put it on. I've, I've tried the nano or other different collars for these dogs. And it is a big old brick, you know, yeah. on the bottom of this dog with right. these feathers. Um, but people must understand this that the chameleon we are we did put a lot of high-tech technology it means that the charging of the battery is with induction which is very innovative and for a lot of people quite di difficult because they are used to the Bloody usb things, port yeah. that's right what we do see is change is hard people yeah. are so hard to change from habits good or bad whatever it's a habit yeah. And yeah, like mm -hmm. so we did try to do that, but with this color, we are limited in size, so we cannot serve the real small dogs. That's why we didn't invent the extenders. And that's a medium. And this is a medium. We also have it smaller that that fits a small chihuahua. dogs, the Chihuahua. Yeah. And we're gonna tell you a secret. First of March, we launched Chameleon Tree. Small, medium, large. But don't say that. Don't tell it further. I won't, I won't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> we are on, and in October we launched Chameleon 4. Don't tell nobody. Okay, you got it. And look at this. Bart and Michael are like Steve Jobs and Apple, the like outstanding innovators. And that's all because dog trainers innovate dog trainers tools. And that's the point. And that's it, it too, is that we need to look at a lot of these, uh, a lot of these tools uh, are invented by an engineer or somebody that really, they get an idea of the electricity part of it and how to put together, but it doesn't really translate and they don't have the little nuances of the dog training, uh, like the esoteric knowledge of working with thousands of dogs to see how this could actually benefit. And, um, you know, and, and, um, you know, I think that because you guys are trainers that you have a unique perspective and the product that you're going to produce is going to be not just top of the line, but uh, the the go to for for many professionals. You know, I'm I'm drooling over this stuff, you know, <laughs> like like I love it. And um, like I see, for me, the traditional e collars are bulky and heavy for small dogs. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you have an artistic side, that Bill. I see that in your work, things that you do with glass, you like to create things. Well, Michael and I, we are the same. And for me, it comes when I was a little kid in Africa, we had no toys, we had nothing. So we had to create our own tools by imagination. So a big imagination is what I did bring back out of Africa. Yeah. Love it. Well, and regardless of, of what you believe in, and I'm going to get out there a little bit on the philosophical tip, but we we come from a creator, regardless of who you, you know, a creator created us. And therefore, if we come from a creator, that means that we are many creators. And that's why we're here to create and to uh, innovate and to explore principles on this plane of existence by doing and by learning. and. Um, and so that's that's exactly why we're here. An example. What looks like very, very easy is the feathers, which is not easy. Do you see it? Can you see it in the background? Yeah, you must have put white paper. Oh, oh you can see it. it. Just hold it really close up to the camera, and then you can 
roll it or up. The right there. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. This is stainless steel. It must bend. Bend. But and it yes. must come back. So Michael and I had to find a balance between flexibility and durability because we can make it so strong that it cannot break, but then it cannot bend <laughs> and it pushes again for necrosis. So yep. you have to find the balance. Does it break? Well, maybe one, two percent do break. And then if you look why it breaks, it's because people are pulling leashes on it. You cannot believe what people do. It's a oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> and yes, sometimes accidents do happen. I mean, and yes, sometimes or, or dogs that scratch, they scratch so hard you cannot believe with the back pull, 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 with the power. Yeah. And that's how it can happen. <coughs> but yeah, we see also the, the, the little dogs are really left out of the e-collar train, you know? Mm. And when that's you amazing. when you look at this, with the small would be minus an island on each side. And your collar would go, your receiver would go here. So you see, it can be quite small. Go ahead and put that around your wrist, if you don't mind, just so that you can show people that's how cool. what that looks like, you know? Medium. That's medium. Right. Yeah. This is a medium. That's a medium, so it goes smaller than this, folks. Smaller than this, yes. So it could fit around my wrist. The small oh, yeah. could fit around my wrist. I did put a picture of that already on Facebook. But you know, it's fun for Michael and me. We are the bosses of the company. But on the other side, we also learned that we must be able to pay our colleagues. Yes. We also learned that we have to pay suppliers. We also learned that we have to pay for everything. So it has a price. And it's, so, it's on our shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> what we do see is that since we have the company, we triple the figures. So we don't double, we triple. Wait. And we do that together with those Hard-working hard working colleagues, but we are also coached by that company for Reliance and they do the, and the, the, the projects and the forecast. And in the beginning, they were asking Michael and me, um, what do you think we will increase? 5%, 10%? And we said, no, we double. Yeah. <laughs> they were looking just like, are you guys crazy or what? Yes, that? I know. We know the market. So we, hey, I, I, I know in the old days, Inotech. Doubled, tripled every year. You cannot believe. I'm trying to find my old Inotech books I have well, in here with the old collars on them, too. I still have them in a museum. You know, Bill, it's like e collar technology came on market 10 years ago, where everybody was telling the market is full. Well, e collar technology shows the opposite. They fly high, they double, they double, they double. It's unbelievable what they did the last 10 years. Why yeah. should be able to do it. There is not one company in the whole world that has the whole range of products that we do have at Martin Systems. With the innovation. We have pigeon launches. We have pheasant launches. We have beepers. We have Falcon MPS GPS. We have Dock GPS. We have anti-bark. We have invisible fence. We have the traditional la 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 for the pet people. And then we have the more sophisticated stuff, and then we have the chameleon product line. Tell me which company does do that. And then what people don't know is that we are an R&D company, a research and development. One of our engineers did develop a tool for mining people, that if they go in the prohibited areas, there is an alarm going off you cannot believe. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's to a, save lives. To save life, which yep. in we have very strong unions, and the unions say the workers, and certainly the lonely workers, must have that tool. Well, he means lonely workers, the, the people who work solo in yeah. the dark. Yes. Where no one can see them. The, the next project is the man down. The man down means there is a man down. The system must tell the headquarters that the lonely man is down. We call this a reactive system. We will go further. We're going to create an active system. I will not reveal secrets with Michael, <laughs> but the system will tell half an hour before a heart attack yep. comes. You already revealed whatever. some secrets. Yeah. <laughs> we won't reveal. tell anybody. Well, your secret uh, safe with me. We reveal the secret is because we don't want you to tell it. Huh? I mean, <laughs> in, in my life, sentence, what two people know, a lot of people will know soon. Yes. 
Yes. This well, is a very good question. The, the chameleon. The chameleon is not a standalone remote and caller. It it needs uh it needs a Martin system transmitter that it can be paired to. So yeah, we have a question here. Terry asks, "What I want to make sure I'm understanding? Uh, the chameleon isn't a standalone remote caller. It is just it is used in conjunction with the Martin brand callers, is what he's saying. In well, case that's with the Martin brand callers with Martin system transmitters." Okay. So, but the the extender is a chameleon brand. It's a chameleon brand, and this can be used with your Dogtra or with your e-collar technologies, or oh, with your okay. or with your uh, Garmin. Garmin, right? It can. This can be used with whichever brand you have. The chameleon, where the electronics are built into it, must have a transmitter that they're compatible with. Same as if you have a dog chair receiver, you can't pair your dog chair receiver to my Martin system transmitter, it doesn't work. Right. So he would- Very good question. Yeah, yeah, so he would buy the receiver. Um, and, and you have this all bundled up and everything, right? You get a bundle, you can get a separate, and that's the nice thing about the Martin system products and the chameleon products is you can get they, they, you can get this and pair it to this, and then you can buy a different transmitter and also pair it to this, and you can sell this, or you can keep it as an extra one. Or you can buy a micro, and you can pair your micro and your chameleon to this transmitter. You can buy an extra finger kick. And this is finger kick. Show, show the finger kick real quick, too, because that, when I first saw uh, Martin Systems, I was blown away by this thing. And yeah, so that goes around the finger because a lot of dogs will get they'll get collar wise, and they'll also get with the remote, and and these people will wear the remote on their vest or something like that, and then as soon as you start to reach for that, that dog will be like, oh crap, you know. That's you, you must listen. Oh. Actually, I I, yeah. I, have, I have a story for you. Go ahead. The uh the the the, the famous Bart stance when the dog lays down. Yes. 1996. It's because that was the position where he got a zap from the e-collar and you must stay down. The old Tritronic, which was the big tube. Yes. I under find that bug. <laughs> and of course, people don't know that, but people copy that move. Yep. Everyone copies that move and as if it's the lay down command. But really, the dog just caught on. Yep. Aha. Yep. Look at that, you guys. So this my is uh, from the 70s. Look at that. My so, God. That's the Tritonic. I understanding electric my dog turning collar. With this, they would do the uh, vibration and then just boom, nail them, you know? And then that, that dog would be, because it would be calm, vibrate, and then here, here it comes, man. If you don't, if your recall is flying to me, you're about ready to get nailed, you know? Now, another thing, Bill. This is... Injected molding again. That's what people don't grab. People always want to open things. We know that what people can open, water will come in. Yes. And they always say, no, I did not do it. We yes. know it. Water comes in. Yes. So that's why we decide we make it so that it cannot open it. Yeah, but if after, after 10 years, the battery is dead. Well, I have here a watch from a very... G-Shock? Well-known brand, G-Shock. And then you yeah. read you read the warranty. There is no warranty on the battery because they say that if I always push on the light, I kill my battery very fast, and that's why they don't give warranty on the battery. Yeah. Everything we, else? Michael and I, we are obliged to give in Europe a two-year full warranty, which we do. And we also do it in the rest of the world. We must not, but we do. So we take care of our people, and after the warranty, we will always, always help the people. Absolutely. <laughs> I have been using the Chameleon 2 for two, more than two years with three finger kicks. Outstanding, all capital letters, communication tool. Now, nice if you check, if you check a Bluetooth, that's how you do it, eh, folks. You have your finger, you have your transmitter, you hold it behind your back and then you push. If it's working, then you have a good Bluetooth device. 
Why? Mm. Your body is more than 90% water, and water blocks the Bluetooth signal. We mm. went to those pains. So if you buy a system with Bluetooth, do that test, transmit it in front of you, your button with Bluetooth behind your back, and push. Because that normally does happen when you're it working, always when you're working dog. I, I do it all the time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so even just, we, you'll find you're in that configuration. As, as a helper, this is my preferred combination. This is a tool, CTT. You put that on your arm or something, right? Don't you have it where you can put it on yeah, your arm? On your arm, but here in this case, we put it around our waist like this. Okay. And we do it antenna and rotation up down so that we can watch. We watch, and now you know which level you are. And you can yeah. flip it around. You, you put it wherever. You can go swim with it. This is specially made for that. So this is the real tactical stuff that yeah. we make for tactical people, police and army. And what do we see? Who buys it the most? Joe Bob buys it the most. And he said, how is it possible? <laughs> we make it for tactical people and Joe Bob, the finger kick. More and more pet people want this because they want to have their transmitter in the purse or wherever. And they want to be able to bike with their dog. Yeah. They want to be able to do errands and get their dog so out of the car and carry their groceries. It was never designed for that, but people are smart and they find out, hey. It's a technology I world. I want yeah. Yeah. immediately when I drive my car, I want to push on the button. By the way, be quiet. Yeah. Do you see this? Do you see this? This is the smallest GPS oh locator in the world. The smallest. Mongo, Mongo. We can find 32 dogs with a color like this with one handheld unit. This is not seen in the world. And we have one engineer that does this. We are the companies that have 150 engineers and have big bulky stuff. I don't understand that. So somebody does something wrong or somebody does something right. I think that we do something right, but we cannot reach the market with our too high prices because people only compare price sheeting and they never compare what's behind the price. Functionality. Never. Right. So with cars they do because with cars they have more knowledge. And with pants they do. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, well, everything. And I think that we're just not there. I still think that we're in the emerging uh, market here. And the more that people uh, see how this, the the many different ways that this can be used and the applications that it can be, um, you know. And that's a very, that's a very good point. I'm sorry to interrupt. But no worries. The different applications because we use the e-collar as a do tool. Also, yes. Mostly as a do tool. Almost always as a do tool. It's not. You know, it's a tap. I heard a lady say it's a tap on the shoulder when the voice isn't working. You know, and that was kind of like, oh, okay, cool. That 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 helps. You know, it just kind of uh, it brings the communication a step further. Um, and if, you know. of course, at the end. The dog must avoid the tap on the shoulder in competition, but not for pet people. The pet people, you can use a tap on the shoulder forever. It's no problem. Yep, absolutely. Well, and quality is not cheap, uh, uh, Alex says. So, you know, and that's that's it. And and you know, I I encourage people to just check out the products. You know, and I I love just how how he's so. I mean, throwing it on me and shocking, I mean, hitting me with it and then walking, you know, uh, through, through the, um, when I first saw Bart, how I got introduced to you was you put these e-collars, it was on the International Association of Canine Professionals and you put the e-collars on people and then you had a hundred dollar bill. So you put real money out there and then you had these people try to get this this bill wearing the collars and you were controlling him. And I thought that that was fantastic, man. Yeah. The well, lady won. What's that? The lady won. Yes, yeah, she did. She got <laughs> it. Well, if she was a dog, we would say she's a good bitch. Let's breed her. <laughs> <laughs> good thing I don't know who it was. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have to tag her. <laughs> in the, well, in the, hey, you know, people hey. will pay $1,000 for a, a year for a new phone 
but stint uh, on a good collar for a working dog. And I just think that they don't know, you know, I think that a lot of this is that they, they, um, you know, they just don't know what they don't know. And as we move further along on this and, and uh, people see the dogs that are being produced, um, and that's the other thing that got my attention too. I think it was with uh, Fred Hassan and Sit Means Sit a long, long time ago. And, and the stuff that he was doing um, was, I was like, how the heck are these dogs doing this? You know, what's going on here? You know, and, and there's some like magic happening here. I've never seen anything like this. And so we let the dogs show us, you know, that, that, that they're the expert. Um, what I did like about Fred Hassan is Fred never, never, never denied the e collar. Never. He was always Truthful. open and frank about it. And that's what making Michael and I sick. The whole world, especially in Europe, is. Yeah. A little bit confused about the e-collar because the people that know how to work with dogs tell the world they do it without they're just liars because if michael and i show the invoices of our company to the whole world a lot of professionals positive professionals would be have losing their faces <laughs> what we can say is we were we will never do that it's also <laughs> a secret that we have to to keep but i mean why just not telling the whole world that it's part of harmony? And, and, and that's and another that's thing is uh, we've gotten a lot of questions from people asking, would we get e-collar seminars, no. e-collar workshop? I refuse. And it's not, e-collar is just a tool in the system. And we think it's just a tool. It's a tool and it's how you use it. Mm. It's like, I was a young kid and I came in Belgium and the first club, I had two clubs in my life. The first club I was, was about five, 600 meters from the door of my parents. In those days, a top club. And there was an old man, and I never forget his name, Jeff Seuss. And Jeff Seuss was certainly a guy that did influence me a lot. He was a very smart guy and very successful with dogs. And he came out of horse world and he told me, Maneke. And Maneke in my language means little guy. Little man. Little man. And here in my hand, I have a bamboo because in those days we trained dogs with a bamboo stick. And he said, yes. Bart, with a bamboo, you must be able to give the dog guidance. Direction. Direction. With the same bamboo, speed up. Reinforcer of the command. With the same bamboo, you must say no. And then, bam, bam, you whack his ass. That's, you charge the word no with the consequence. Yes. What modern people don't do, they say no, 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 but the dog continues. Why? Because they don't charge the word. If you charge mm -hmm. your finger, you must also charge your, your stop word, whatever it is. Well, and, and doing, doing what's right doesn't always feel good. And that's the other thing that, they, that the people do is that this doesn't feel good to me. And I'm, I'm telling them it does, it's not some, supposed to feel good because it's a, it's a correction. We're, we're charging this up. This is something that the dog doesn't want to repeat again. Yes. And then the same bamboo, you must be able to pet your dog, to caress him. And then after you whack his ass, you can shift and you, you throw the bamboo away, you say fetch. If you can do all that with your bamboo, then you're a dog trainer, he told me. Mm. I was not right to understand it. And at the end, that's what the e-collar is. You can do a lot of communication with it. And if you go too far in one direction, then it becomes that. If I use this just for bam, bam, when the dog sees it, he's afraid, he's, of, it. He's afraid of it. He's not going to let me pet him with it. He's not going to get it. Apprehension. Right. It builds oh. apprehension and distrust. Oh. If you do it wrong, you know, and that's if they're clear in their head, then it means something in that context, and it means something in that picture, and it means something in that picture, and, it, and then it's clear. One more question, you guys, and then I'm going to let you go. We've been we've been talking for a while here. I know you guys got to do dinner, and I I so appreciate your time today. This has been fabulous this has been better than i even uh was picturing uh bart can you explain the difference in the feel of the stem between martin system collars and other common collars dog cry ect garmin i don't have a martin collar but i've been told that the stem is more of an activation stem than other collars do you have a comment for that i'm gonna ask that 
it's easy. You can activate with every color from every brand. You must be a good dog trainer. You can activate a dog with a pinch color. You can also activate a dog with a choker, whatever. I mean, if the dog understands your stimulation, you can activate him with every brand. But what we did do specially with our brand is we know the preferences of people. That's why in our brand, people with a USB stick can change their preferences. For example, the old Tritronic was known for pulsating electricity. Tap, tap, tap. It's about three pulses per second. And Tritronic in those days did even patent that stimulation pattern. It's like the Harley Davidson, they pattern their noise. And you can, a you, can, yes, sir. you can also check uh, the Go Bobby site where he wrote uh, an article oh, yeah. about the different uh, uh, the different peaks of electricity in the different brands, and he did a comparison. And he's uh, scientifically minded. So if you go to gobobby.be, you will find a, a fair number of articles in the blog about uh, e collars. What was the name of that, Michael? Go Bobby. Go Bobby dot B E. Go Bobby dot B E. I'm gonna answer that question with an anecdote about activating. What people must know is they're always free to ask for a video chat with Michael or with me. Okay? We will give people five, ten minutes to explain the tool. We will not give training on video okay. because I don't believe in becoming black belt karate via online. Some people do. Michael and I, we don't do too much. Anyway, but the guy is on a video chat with me and he said, hey Bart, I did buy a chameleon and I was on a seminar and the seminarist told with Doctora you can activate and not with Martin Systems because with Martin Systems, and then he did like this, and he does, mm, mm. I said, ah. I said, okay, maybe you push to I say, it's easy. Tap your button of our brand on the low level, give him food. Tap, give him food. Tap, give him food. One week later, you go one level higher, tap, he will come to you, you give him food. Tap, he comes to you, you give him food. Now you change the feeling of the steam in a do something. And yes. then after three weeks, he say, hey, Mark, my dog is very active now on the chameleon. He <laughs> said, yeah, but I told the chameleon was not making your dog active. It has nothing to do with the type of e-color brands. It has to do with how you train your dog. Very what funny. is true? What is true is that if you tap, Release, tap, release, tap, release, tap, release, tap, release. There is more moments of no stim. And a dog needs that relaxed moment to learn. Mm. Yeah, that's progress. Uh, yes. We, for example, with our brand, we have 200 peaks in one second. It goes very fast. Okay. With a USB stick, we can change it in three taps per second. By factory setting, we set it so that from level 11, it's tap, release, tap, release, tap, release. And on the low levels, you have 200 peaks. You can change it. Yes, but that makes more sense because in the, in the, for the low levels, it's when you're training and when you're using it as real communication and the dog is in lower drive, theoretically. Yeah. In the higher ones, you have a tap and a stop and a tap so they can think. And especially yeah. for light work because the most people, yeah. Bite it or you buy it for the bite work on high levels, <laughs> unfortunately. Yes. And if you tap with a normal color with a lot of stimulation peaks, the dog cannot out because you activate the muscles to hold. And that's why we want to tap release. Yeah, release. muscle contraction. Yes. Muscle that's control. right. Well, this is a tens unit, you know, and they use it in physical therapy because it contracts those muscles. And you can actually see if it gets to a higher stem, you can actually see that that muscle contraction here. Well, well and then before stopping, Bill, <laughs> we're going to make a promise. Between this and two months, we get, we're going to put a charter online that okay. tells level one is 
so much millijoule. Level two is so much joule, level three. So that people can compare with their brand, that people, because what first trade us, well, they must ask it to their brand, whatever. I will not measure other brands. No. Our engineer will announce our millijoules, and our advantage is 100% that whatever the resistance is, our millijoules stay the same. Because With a classic have, brand. Because we have SSC. Yes, that's the most important patent for us, the SSC. That's the patent that was even accepted in Belgian welfare as a parameter for colors to be, to be legal. That they must have that. Okay, and we, the company, we are prepared to share the patent with other brands. If they come and they have a fair discussion, why should we keep it for us? There is no reason. So yeah, we are going to benefit dogs, you know, that's why we're here to benefit dogs at the end of the day, you know. Um, so people, uh, Daniel says he wants to know if you're going to be bringing to uh, coming to Canada with your Nipo Po. You guys have any seminars scheduled by chance in Canada? I and I don't do seminars anymore. It's no go. Only the oh, school. there you go. Only the school. Man. Come to him. You got to go to him now, folks. No. So uh, thank you for your time and educational chat. What's that, Bart? Sometimes you must turn the page. You know what well, the problem of a seminar is? You are a little bit as a, you, you are a performer. And at the end of your performance, it's about people having fun and oh, it was funny, la 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 la. But you never knew what do people take home? Yeah. What did they learn? What did they learn? And you have no whip in the school. We have a whip. You must make ninety percent, or you are not qualified to go to gold. And in gold, you must do well. Or you don't receive so you, your gold just, certificate. Just because you pay doesn't mean you yeah. pass. Yeah, standards are huge, man. And the standards, that, that they should be very, very high, especially in the sport world, in my opinion. That's why it's precision. And, uh, you know, and that's where a lot of these standards have gone by the wayside. You know, it's like the everybody gets a trophy type of thing. <laughs> of course, it is a little bit like a driver's license because you can pass your driver's test and then hit a tree the next day. Yes. Or actually, three years oh. down the road, you you have a whole bunch of tickets, but it doesn't. It's not it's not measuring that. It's measuring on that day when you were evaluated. You 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 had a good enough score to pass. The rest is experience and what hard Michael, work. What Michael tries to explain you is that from every student, we will keep the files for ten years for the day that one of the students ever is under siege because he or she was using a pinch color, an e color, or whatever, then we can say, well, that lady or that gentleman was very well performing. And it's not because there is a claim against them that they are faulty. It can be that the people that are charging them of a claim are very innocent and know nothing. Mm -hmm. So we will, with pleasure, plead for those people and say, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't judge them before you know the whole thing. Because they learn a lot. And yes, sometimes people can do mistakes. And then we will also say that. But I mean, we have the files of everybody for 10 years. For when it burns and stinks, we could eventually prove that that day that they did pass, they were very, very knowledgeable. Yeah. Well, Valerie says a classroom work is entirely designed to help the students succeed. If they do the work, the class was amazing. <laughs> Thanks, so hey, thank you. Well, and Michael and Bart, I want to thank you two for being uh, sharing your day with me today, and and uh, all this information, and and just thank you for innovating and making um, you know communication easier for people and dogs. And uh, I look forward to uh, owning one of your chameleon products and and uh, bringing my relationship with my dogs to the fullest potential um when i have that that uh the tool that that fits them very well I, i'm i'm so looking forward to having uh, one of your collars on my dogs hey bill tell people that my english is not perfect and that sometimes yeah. it uses the brain you know can i say it yeah for example the words lazy fuck <laughs> is it a lazy fox? Is it a lazy fox? Or is it a lazy fox? 
<laughs> I think the first one, lazy fuck, is just well. The you know that uh, the first time I ever met um, Bart was at the ICP. My my beard was so like ungroomed and stuff. I'm like, hey Bart, and you walk up to me. You're like, you you look like shit. You need to shave. <laughs> oh yeah. I was like, I love this guy. <laughs> I'm quite direct. Yes, quite direct. I always come away with some things. I, I never was in trouble about that, never. But that's the freedom of the Chester, I suppose. That's right. You come in loud. You come through loud and clear, Bart. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fox. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much, you guys. And if you hold on for one second, I'm gonna I'm gonna say goodbye to you on the other end here. And everybody, if you're watching this, make sure to hit that share button uh, so we can get as many people watching this and showing them the the excellent product and Martin Systems. And then also, let me show the the website here really quick: martinsystemsshop.com. Uh, reach out to Bart and Michael and um, and say hi. And if you have any questions, ask them. And and thank you, everybody. It's Super Bowl Sunday here in America, so everybody's going to be partying wow. and watching that football game. So uh, hey. I, I I really don't know. I'm going to be playing with my dogs, so I don't really know who's playing or anything. Not really important to me, but everybody else, have a wonderful day in America. And um, and then hold on, you guys. I'll, I'll say goodbye to you on the other end. Um, bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everybody.